Let's face it, cranial nerves are hard. There's just so many of them and they perform so many functions. So how on earth are you supposed to learn them? Well, research shows that linking movement with content helps to enhance learning and memory. That's why I'm presenting Cranial Krav, fighting your way through the cranial nerves, one attack at a time. First, let me introduce the cranial nerves. Cranial nerve one, the olfactory nerve. This nerve is responsible for carrying the sense of smell. To represent this, we're gonna take an open palm and we're gonna heel strike our opponent in the nose. Cranial nerve two, the optic nerve. This nerve is responsible for carrying sight. To represent this, we're gonna take two fingers and eye gouge our opponent. <sighs> Sounds a little violent? True, but so is Krav Maga. Cranial nerves three, four, and six. The ocular motor, trochlear, and abducens nerve respectively. I'm lumping these nerves all together because they all perform a similar function which is motor innervation of the extraocular eye muscles. Now, in real Krav Maga, following a sequence of attacks, you would look around, looking for weapons of opportunity, escape routes, and additional attackers. In cranial Krav, we're gonna look around, but just with our eyes to represent the function of these three cranial nerves. So first, we're gonna look up and then look down. This movement is controlled by muscles that are innervated by the ocular motor nerve. In particular, the superior rectus, the inferior rectus, and the inferior oblique. Following that, we're gonna look down and out to our right. The down and out movement is enabled by the superior oblique muscle, which is innervated by cranial nerve four, the trochlear nerve. So we'll look down and out to the right, and then to the left. After that, we're gonna look, look out just to the right. Now, as one of my eyes, the right eye, is looking out, the left eye is looking in. That inward movement is controlled by the medial rectus, which is another muscle that's innervated by ocular motor nerve. But the, look, the eye that's looking out, or abducting the eye, that is enabled by the lateral rectus muscle, which is innervated by the abducens nerve. So abduction, adducens nerve. So to go over this one more time, look up and down, ocular motor, look down and out to the right, and, and to the left, trochlear, and then out to the right, out to the left, abducens nerve. So after looking around, we identify another attacker, which is just as well because we still have cranial nerve five to use in our fight. Cranial nerve five is the trigeminal nerve. This nerve is responsible for carrying sensation from the face. To represent this, we'll grab our opponent in the head and headbutt them in the face, making sure that that trigeminal nerve takes all that pain back to the brain. As all good martial artists know, half of the battle is intimidating your opponent. So for this, we're gonna use cranial nerve seven, the facial nerve. The facial nerve provides motor innervation to the muscles of facial expression. So use those to make your worst, most awful, intimidating ninja look ever. <sighs> Well, it turns out our intimidating ninja look didn't quite cut it. So now we'll have to move on to cranial nerve eight, the vestibular cochlear nerve. Well, this nerve carries both the sense of hearing as well as the sense of balance. To represent this, we'll take an open palm and we'll ear slap our opponent. Cranial nerve nine, 
the glossopharyngeal nerve. This nerve is responsible for carrying sensation from the back of the throat or the pharynx region. Now, how on earth do we represent this using martial arts? Well, as part of its function, it's responsible for feeling foreign objects in the back of our throat and causing us in initiating the gag reflex. So for this, we're going to look at our opponent and gag. Ugh. Okay, I know, this one is a stretch of the imagination, but they can't all be good. Moving on to cranial nerve 10, the vagus nerve. This nerve is responsible for a whole host of functions, two of which I'm going to highlight in this demo. One is that it carries parasympathetics to most of the organs, including most of the organs as of the ab abdomen, as well as the heart and lungs. To represent this, we're gonna give our opponent a good old knee strike to the gut. Yeah! Notice I also let out a loud yell. This is because another one of the functions of the vagus nerve is to provide motor innervation to the larynx, otherwise said as the vocal cords. After that last move, our opponent seems to have pretty much had it. So we're gonna move on to cranial nerve 11, the spinal accessory nerve. First, we're gonna look around looking for additional attackers because this nerve provides motor innervation to the sternocleidomastoid muscle, which helps with rotation of the head. When we see that there are no other attackers, we're gonna shrug our shoulders, trapezius muscle, and walk away. But not before turning around, sticking out our tongue at our, at our opponent to represent hypoglossal nerve, cranial nerve 12, providing motor innervation to the intrinsic muscles of the tongue. You ready to put this all together? Let's do it. Palm heel strike to the nose. Eye gouge. Look up, look down, look out to the right, out to the left, side to side. Headbutt your opponent in the face. Intimidating ninja face. Ear slap. Gag. Yeah! Knee to the gut. Look around. Shrug your shoulders. Walk away. Stick out your tongue. 